Welcome, Welcome to, to Schmuckcast, Schmuckcast. Hey, our first visual podcast. Don't step over me. This is Matt, Matt Weatherford, and this is... Matt Weatherford, that's Lenny Sherman. This is Lenny Sherman over here. We did a, We wanted to do a visual just because we want everyone to see what we look like. Unfortunately, this is what you get, you know. You've heard our great voices all this time. But this, this is us. You know, this is who we are up in Lenny's bungalow. You know, we just thought we owed it to our what many fans out there. What do they call it? Bungalow there. 47? Yeah. I just thought we owed it to all our fans that, you know... This is us, you know. We're and if we you. fail, we don't have very we many love fans. You. Buy our merchandise, you know. Yeah. This is kind of cool. It's like a new thing, you know. And instead of just voices, it's us. And, so what? You know. What do you? What do you have on the roster today? Yeah, we got a little what things. We, well, we first one, about? obviously, a reflection about our podcast and just how how many we've done and how fun it's been to be able to do this with you and talk about something well, we're both uh, you, passionate about. You and about. I, not including the the one that Glenn and I did solo. I think there's twenty two episodes. Yeah, twenty two. Yep. Okay. Enter My Pod was the last one. Glenn with the special hosting. That was all right. Get all the movies mixed up. What the fuck are you talking about, Glenn? It happened like eight times. Yeah. No, I'm just, I've been really happy we've been able to do this and share our thoughts on movies and actors. And... I really kind of wish we could talk more more about more than just movies, though, because yeah. I kind of run out of topics. There are, there are podcasts out there that have literally hundreds of episodes because they bring, you know, different things. And not just, like, nerd stuff, too. Like, they bring in, like... Comic books. Sports and other shit. Yeah, but They're you don't more... like sports. I don't. I only like video games and movies, so there you go. <laughs> yeah, well, all I got is video games and movies. No, I just the, the reflection because we've done so many of them, and it's cool. I think that me and you continue to keep talking about. I really today. did like our last one we did for the Halloween podcast, though, with just the random Friday the Thirteenth talk. I, I I always love talking about that franchise. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm sure we will tonight too, just a little bit, because I actually watched all six, the first six movies. Oh, did last you last month? Yeah, because it was Halloween. Thank you God know, somebody's and... watching good movies, because I man, I watched a lot of shit last month. I know. You want to talk about? Let's Holy let's hear God. it. Man, you you went through the meat grinder. Yeah. <laughs> so I cooked up a story and dropped the six of us in a meat grinder. <laughs> did you tell tell the people about it? Would you? Well, I was running out of ideas. Um, and this is what just a little side note. James Rolf, who does the the uh, Monster Madness on Cinemasker every year, he's actually asking fans what movies he wants to see reviewed for next year's Monster Madness because he's probably running out of ideas too. Free Willy and yeah. <laughs> Showgirls, yeah, absolutely horrifying. Which I did watch that recently, so that was that'll be next year's. Oh God, <laughs> good God! Man. Not not as bad, not as bad as people say it is. I'll, I'll Showgirls. Be with that. Yeah, yeah, I can I can give an honest analysis on that movie. Okay. It's scary. It wasn't one of those. It's too bad. It's good, right? Was it kind of like that? No, I don't understand why it, it gets funny? a bad reputation. Oh, I can okay. see why, it, you know, some people would be embarrassed to be in it. It's a lot of nudity in that Paul movie. Paul Verhoeven, right? Yes. A RoboCop fan? Yeah. Okay. You know, for every Hollow Man and for every Showgirls, he does do RoboCop and, a, you know, Starship Troopers, two of my favorite movies. Nah, mine too. Um, top, but, yeah, I, I just, I ran out of ideas because I'm a franchise horror fan. I like slasher franchises. Yeah. So I've been doing it now since 2010. I, and the first year I did the, the major ones. I did all the, the Freddies, the Jasons, and the Michael Myers. And then I topped it off with the Evil Dead trilogy. So the next year I did, like, yeah. you know, the Chuckies and the Aliens and Night of the Living Dead. And yeah. then I, the, the year after that I did, like, Howling and Michael Jackson's Thriller and Bungholio Lord of the Harvest, which is the Beavis <laughs> and Butthead. You did all the Howling special. movies? Yeah, in one review. Oh, God. oh, my God. It doesn't get any worse you than that. You watched those? Yes. Yeah, dude. You need, like, those some Xanax. Bad. I know, <laughs> but um, so I ran out of ideas. So this was this year was a little, and then last year I took a break. Last year I did like Paranormal Activity, which I just got that's, into. Yeah, that's not bad. And those are good, and I did like a couple of podcasts, and that was it. Uh, so I came back to doing one video a day for Halloween for October, and I did all the Puppet Masters, all the Hellraisers, all, all of the uh, <sighs> I did Tremors for my for my finale. I did uh, Critters, and I did Leprechaun. Yeah, we know the people know. People so knows. bottom of the barrel, and it was just because I was running out of ideas, but I wanted to keep it going and. Honestly, I said this before, but this will probably be my last year doing it. The only other, Aww. the only other way I can continue it is for next year. I want to do just really obscure, not even, not like slasher movies, but just horror. In you general. should check out the Omen series. I'm telling I you, watch the Omen. not just the first movie. Yeah. So we know I'm no, if you go I'm online, you. if you look up, like... if you look up horror movies on Wikipedia, it gives you the name of pretty much every horror movie ever made, mm -hmm. whether it's thriller or psychological or slasher, or whatever, and it goes by a decade. So I was thinking of picking a couple from every decade and just doing it that way. Just movies that I'm not even familiar with that I could check out and talk yeah. about. Uh, supposedly, the very first horror movie ever made was back in 1890, and it's like a three-minute silent film, obviously. It's on YouTube, though. That's far. No. No. Uh, it's, I think it's called The Dark Castle or something like that. It's it's either a German or Italian <laughs> right, film. Right, right. And uh, it, it might also be the first vampire movie. A lot of really That's simple, cool. a lot of simple tricks they used. It all takes place in a castle hallway, um, but it's it's a very easy story to kind of get. It's I don't know if it would be applicable today, but uh, very easy movie to follow. 
That um, was one of the things I had here on my itinerary was like, what's going to be on the next 31 days of slashers? Is there going to be another one? Or you Yeah, know? Uh, well, let's, you know, I mean, last, a couple of years ago in 2012, I ran, so uh, bereft of ideas that I did Harry Potter. <laughs> and, yeah, because that's the slasher movie. Um, it is called 31 Days of Slashers. Um, so yeah, so stone. that's that's what it would be because I, I don't have any other franchises that I'm really familiar with. Hmm. I don't and, like I don't want to do stuff that's really shitty. Well, you got all year to catch up, you know. Yeah, you well, they the take year. they take a while to do. Uh, this one I actually started doing these in July. Okay. So it, it they I mean to do a three four minute video every day because I literally have to sit there in in one day to do them consecutively. I have to watch the movie, write the review, voice over the review, Ugh. and edit the review. It's like a six hour process for one for one you of did these. Texas reviews. Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, you did that too. I Man, did. Dude. So yeah, I'm just running out of ideas, but I don't want to. I mean, once in a while, people like give me suggest. This year, actually, a lot of you gave me the Omen. Uh, someone else had given me a couple of ideas to do. I, I did a couple of bonus ones, which I don't do. I did right. Tusk as a bonus, which we could actually talk about Tusk. I actually thought found that to be very interesting. I got to see it before we can talk about it, but um, yeah. we, we can talk about it. the highlights. It, all you got to do is go online and listen to the Kevin Smith podcast. He he like talks about the entire movie, yeah. and the reason why it exists was he was like, if you want to see the movie. Either do hashtag walrus yes or hashtag walrus no for his Twitter, and a bunch of people did a hashtag walrus yes. Yeah, I know the story behind yeah. it. Yeah, I'm excited mostly though. Clerks three is a go, and I think they're already like uh, working on it. No, not yet, but well, he's got a script. He's got the script going. And they got and the financing down. Johnny Depp's gonna be in it. Is he really? <laughs> I'm just <laughs> randomly. Anyways, aren't you that, that guy from Nightmare on Elm Street? <laughs> <laughs> Great death, bro. I've heard from Kevin Smith and anybody who's read the Clerks Three script. It's like a really sad and like profound movie. So Let's I do a quick. I want to do a quick movie review because you're on a roll with the Kevin Smith. These are old videos, though. So like, yeah, I face. did these back. But I believe one of the next ones coming up. I want to talk about real quick was uh, Jan Saw Bob Strike Back. So what do you think of Jan Saw Bob Strike Back? I, I actually I like it. I like all the references to his uh, previous movies. There's a lot of them in there. Yeah. You can't show this to somebody that hasn't seen his movies. I mean, they well, that that was the thing. Um, I yeah. have I have a love hate relationship with it only because oh. the best parts to me about that movie were all the in jokes. Yeah. You know, if I had come in to see it and and not known anything about the prior films, it would have been just another. But you weren't stupid. You, you were. You did know them though. I would, that that's true. They're talking about fictional characters. Fictional characters. No. That, but that's that's the thing. Like, if I'd never seen one of these, because because that movie by itself, road trip movies have a certain appeal to ever, anybody who likes comedy. Yeah. You know, so there's people who probably never heard of Jay and Silent Bob that went to see that based on the trailers or based on word of mouth or whatever. That wouldn't have gotten like, why is Ben Affleck playing? That himself? is a road trip and, movie. Yeah. You know, that is a road trip movie. It is. A lot um, of cameos though, and I, my favorite might, yeah. be, might be Mark Hamill. I mean, that was yeah. awesome to see him on the big screen. Not again. What? Yeah, in the cock blocker. Why do they call you? Oh, big story. Shaka! No, but kind of a cool story, and I always really like the ending, though, when they go to everyone's houses and kicks their ass, you know. Did you say that we're a bunch of cum guzzling bitches? Yeah, you know in, in Clerks you know in Clerks 2, when uh, when uh, they're in the prison at the very end, and Jay's like, well, only the money we have it, that yeah. money was from the Jay and Silent Bob movie. Bob. So movie you don't like money. it so much, or what? You don't think it's um, one of better ones? What were you going to say about it in your little it's, video? It's a good, it's a funny movie in its own merit. I just, you know... At that time, when it was just the five movies, I really liked his, his serious stuff. My favorite films of his at that time were Clerks and Chasing Amy. Yeah. So I really wanted to see him do more stuff like that. And um, it was kind of discouraging. I just, I don't see Jay and Silent Bob having their own movie. It's kind of one of the reasons why I didn't like like Dogma so much. Yeah. Allie, go on. Right. Downstairs. No. Okay, give you a hug. Give her, give her a little cameo. Real quick. Okay. I love you, Allie. Aw. Mm. Are you going to bed, bye? Going to bed? I love you. Good to see you on the podcast. Good night. Good night. Oh, Love you. So Careful of the camera. Look at that. Now, see, that—that that is how you do a cameo on a podcast. Right okay. there. Thank you, Allie. Love you, honey. Love you. Night, night. Heart. I don't want to talk about the movies anymore. It just melted my heart. That's my daughter, ladies and gentlemen. Man. And this is Matt Wood. <laughs> Anyways. Anyways, I digress. Anyways. Uh, so, Jane, Bob, yeah. Um, yeah Sean William I, Scott, right? Sean William Scott was in it? Yeah, and th that was the other thing, too, was... Don't there, there's yeah, there's a lot of uh, my biggest problem with Mallrats was the the humor seemed very forced. Like I'm not big on slapstick humor. It just you've got to do it exactly right, and if you don't do it, it, it just it's not my kind of humor. And Mallrats and Jay and Bob Strike Back were very much slapstick. What's the humor. story of Jay and Saw Bob? They they have rights to their characters or something like that. Um, they 
They find out they, that they're... They get pissed... Well, basically, they find out that Merrimax is making a movie based on Blunt Man and Chronic, which is the comic book based on them. And they find out about the internet. What the fuck is the internet? And they find that all these people are, make, are, are basically calling them, like bashing them, because of this movie. Right. And so they go to Hollywood to stop trying to make the movie being made, not understanding that by letting it be made, they're going to have, they're going to make a ton of money just because of the likeness rights. Um, and that's, you know, comedy ensues. So, <laughs> so called. Yeah. yeah. No, I thought, I thought it was a funny movie. The other thing, though, I really, really, really hate Will Ferrell. I just don't oh, think he's Oh, come funny. on. Fuck me! <laughs> Come on, just, his role was kind of funny though. Maybe they're one of those gay couples. Yeah. There's that slapsticky kind of humor that I just don't I, like. I like it. That was a fugitive reference. Or, yeah, he gets him in the tunnel. Oh. Don't move, dirtbag. I forgot how that works. And that's oh, there's the monkey, right? Uh, yeah. I like the one scene when the girls go all like through the laser beams or whatever and she farts. Right and in. yeah, I just, I don't know. If, did the other Kevin Smith movies have a lot of fart jokes? <laughs> a couple, like I don't know. I, I just. I'm not a prude. I'm not offended by fart jokes. I just don't find I'm not them his funny. Big, apparently, he makes a lot of his money by just talking. I mean, his podcast these days. He doesn't make money on his. No, he doesn't make money on his podcasts. No, well, I don't think so. Sorry, Kevin. If you're watching, hello. He no, is, he's but, rich. I mean, he doesn't need to like make a living. He made one of my favorite movies with Clerks. Well, other than that, yeah. I I don't know. I think his career has definitely declined a lot. Clerks well, too. I like too, and and Chasing Amy. Obviously I really appreciate that he's he's not going like with Clerks too. A lot of people thought, well, Jersey because Jersey Girl came before Clerks too, and it tanked, and so a lot of people thought with Clerks too he was going good. back to the well because Jersey Girl had flopped, and uh, it, it was it's actually my favorite Kevin Smith film to date because what is Ke Clerks too? Oh. Um, because he's he's a better writer than he is a filmmaker, and that's mm -hmm. he got criticized a lot for Cop Out because that was the one film he directed that he didn't write. That movie sucked. Yeah. Anyways, I, I can't defend it. But anyway, um, and then you had you had Zach <laughs> and Miri make a porno, which was basically he admitted this that it was basically his attempt at making a Judd Apatow film. It's a very Judd Apatow like movie. So it was refreshing to see him do like horror, like Red State, which I thought was a bad movie technically. Yeah, yeah. But it was interesting to see him go in that direction. Um, and then Tusk, like oh my god, like I didn't like it at first. I, I really don't know. It was if, a bad movie, Red State. It was I thought Red State was, but I appreciate mm -hmm. it for what it is. Despite it being a bad movie, it's, it's hard. A bad movie, but it's it's hard to explain. Yeah, it's hard to explain. Uh, just for me, I'm glad that he's not doing the same type of comedy now. Like he's gonna be almost in his fifties. Yeah, know? he's getting up there. He shaved so, his beard too. Did you see that? No, he shaved no. his whole beard. He looks like a kid. Wow, it's amazing. Um, but anyways, yeah. So I, I, it's just really cool to see him branch out and do like movies like Tusk, which is, in all honesty, if you really watch Tusk, like, how the fuck do you get this idea made? Yeah. Like, it, that's what I appreciate about Tusk so much. There's some really painful scenes in Tusk, and I mean that in a bad way. Like, there are some scenes that just go on for fucking ever, um, especially with Johnny Depp in a couple You've of them. You've seen it more than once now? No. You just I, it but I do time. want to see it again, like, when it comes to video. I've been checking the sites every day we probably to could. see. But, um, no, I, I appreciated it for what it was, but it's like, how the fuck do you get a movie like that made? Like, it's just the story behind it is so fascinating that he was like, I want to see this movie about this guy stuck in a walrus costume. It's like a human walrus. And you see it, and it's as fucked up as it sounds. It doesn't sound like the most exciting plot, but... It's not so much the plot. It's just, it's it's how far... When you know what the idea is about, and you actually see it play out, yeah. it's exactly what it sounds like, and it's, it's fucked up. But that's why I appreciate it, you know? I don't know. And it, it's a very sweet-looking film. Like, it looked, the cinematography, I really appreciate It's kind of weird being on camera, isn't it? I see you. <laughs> it's a little weird. You wanted to do I it. I feel naked, you know what I mean? I'm, we're so used to doing this behind a mic. But anyways, what do I got here? All right, let's just do really? it. Jason Revisited. I want to talk a little bit about the Jason films. All I know right. we've done it. We did a whole podcast on Jason. Sure. You know what fans we are. So what are we talking Part about? Part 5 sucked. All right, I watched it. It sucked. I like Part 5. No, it sucked. The last, you know what it was? Like, the last, like, half hour, dude, I'm like, ugh. You know what the I worst? That couch, movie wouldn't like, be as bad if they had they had changed the ending to where the paramedic wasn't the. Killer. It wasn't no. It wasn't even about to me. It wasn't about being. A, you know what I mean? Like the chasing because Jason to me is all about the chasing. The last half hour of any Jason movie that's important to have. That was probably the worst one. Well, if Jason, the little black kid with his high. If Jason had been in the movie, I think it would have been. It would have played out better. It's a guy in a chasing. hockey mask chasing people around. But it's show. obvious it's not him. I mean, he. Yeah. he you can tell. The I mean, blue. It's, it's obvious. No, but yeah. just you know, what I mean, it's just. 
watch the last 30 minutes of that movie. It's terrible. The, the, did you, did you, was just Did awful. you ever look up Danny Steinman, the director? Did you ever look him up? I wasn't kidding. He, he, he directed porno, hardcore yeah. porn. I was watching a documentary, and he's like, well, we had a beautiful girl and a beautiful guy, and I, I thought the fans would love... And I'm like, I kind of see what he means. I mean, it's like... It's, it's, but it's a very it's a very sleazy film, and that's yeah. why I think it gets the reputation it does. I called I said one time that it almost feels like a made for TV movie because it's yeah. very sleazy. It is. It almost feels like a softcore porn. I, I didn't like the girl in it. The lead girl was terrible when she's like crawling on the dirt. Oh my god, he's coming at me! And he just walking. And then you have the, the little blonde. Black, yeah, she was terrible. The little black kid, and the ending was stupid in the barn. And then Tommy walks in. Jason. Oh, yeah. I don't know. And then he's like lying on on. The, <laughs> The whole, I, yeah, the I like list. it in as much as I like the like the last four, and, and I'm not comparing it to the final chapter, but all the Jason movies up until like Jason Takes Manhattan, they were the same movie. You can't really argue that. They, they're the, doing the same movie over and over again. So for that, it, it was just a typical Jason film. It wasn't yeah. like like with Halloween 3 where they tried to make it a totally different franchise in and of itself. I just, I don't, and the, you know what, you're right though about the swearing. It, it's when I was watching, I was pointing out several different things. I'm like, all the drug use, all the swearing, and all the nudity. Well, they were, it's really that was weird. a heavy. When you read that from Crystal Lake Memories. Yeah, book, everyone was all fucked up on drugs. It, it tells you which films were heavy drug movies and which films weren't. And five and seven were really, they used a lot of drugs behind the scenes. Yeah, but it's just yeah. like, you know, it, it almost didn't feel like one, especially the swearing. I mean, a lot of the earlier. Hey, that movies, was a little out of place. Not a whole lot of swearing. This but one, I thought some of it was out of was line, like but some of, it, some of it was like Ethel has the best line in the movie. Say it like you mean it, Ma! Would you shut the fuck up? I got a bomb on me. Don't come in here. <laughs> I'll blow us all to hell. I, I don't know. Some, some of the funniest... The kills suck, though, in that movie. It's all the same. You know, most of the deaths are like a machete going up in the air and going, oh, and then... Mm. Yeah. Well... Every that, kill was almost that the same. Movie, that movie, I mean, after part four, really, the MPAA sliced a lot of stuff out of those movies. The yeah, one, the one girl who's doing, like, that weird robot dance, yeah. she was supposed to get a machete up the crotch. They have pictures of it. I wanted to see her boobs. Why didn't we get to see her boobs? She looked... You like that? She she had nice ones, and you know we had to see. You know her mom in real life was the mom in Nightmare Three. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Or was it the first one? No, no it was Nightmare, Nightmare Three. Three. Okay. It was the mom of Kristen. Um, oh, okay. Patricia, yeah, yeah. Pat Patricia Arquette. Hey, Don, where would you keep the bourbon? Yep. Yeah, that's in real life. That's her mom. <laughs> oh, that actor. Wait, what is that dance she was doing? That was weird. She said it was like a mime and a. Yeah, I don't know. It's funny because um. The guy who plays Reggie the Reckless, he, they interview him in that documentary, and he he like remembered the lyrics of that song. He's singing it. There's a magical life inside. I love this pretty cool. Ah! <laughs> he has that really. He was loud yeah. Shriek. Here's another bit of history when he was doing that because he, he he like everyone sends him emails about that yeah. shriek. He was like really sick that day when he was shooting that. Oh, so okay. he says he had like a really hoarse voice because they'd been doing that scene all day. So eventually when he had to scream, he had that high pitched scream. I don't know. I think yeah. it's because he was a little bitch, but and it's also an interesting me. Friday Thirteenth movie because someone else is killed by somebody else. It's like you know, it's not Jason. Remember the one guy hacking the the wood. And yeah. he turns on him, and it's like that's like I the think, only. I think that one. was the weakest part of the movie was yeah. was making the it's paramedic. Like it comes from nowhere because the paramedic like shows up in one scene at the beginning of the movie, and then all of a sudden he's the killer because his son dies. The that's not his son. Yeah, it is. How do you know that? That's not. How do they? They don't imply that in the movie. Do yeah, they? they do at the very end. The the fat kid that gets chopped up. Yeah, that's, that's his son. Down. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Watch the ending. They explain I, it and everything. You know, what's weird too about the ending is that Tom Tommy puts on the mask. That was stupid too. I mean, he, he becomes the killer at the end of the movie. Because in part four they set it up to where Tommy was supposed to be the next killer. <laughs> in part six they just resurrect him in the grave. Oh, yeah. Well, there goes that plot thread. <laughs> You know what's really cool about part six was at the very end they had written a scene for Jason's father to show up, and the premise was that if Mrs. Voorhees was so fucked up, who marries yeah. that girl? You know what I'm saying? That's true. And then they 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 made a decision not to shoot it because they didn't want the series to like split off into another, which I thought was kind of clever. Is you Jason did... Six still your favorite, or? I think so. I, I think so because it's you don't have to be a slasher fan to enjoy that. It's the most fun. One. Yeah. Yeah. The Alice Cooper soundtrack. To me, I, I still kind of gravitate towards four because to me, one is more about the gore and the scares, whereas yeah. six was all very lighthearted. But to me, final chapter really combined both of that together nicely where it's funny and gory and scary. I thought the cast was more realistic, yeah. but, I mean, six was very self-aware. Six kind of lacks Actually, good kills. Um, well, well, my favorite was probably The Sheriff. That's what I'm saying, though. If, if you can have a scary movie and you're not... I mean, a good slasher movie, yeah. I think, it's, you know... 
we've seen the kills a million times. There's only so many ways you can stab somebody with a knife or a sharp object. But when you can do mm -hmm. stuff that's clever and make it actually funny... Jamming uh, the girl's face. Kevin Williamson, wall. who wrote all the Scream movies, uh -huh. actually quoted Part 6 as being an inspiration for writing Scream. Yeah, there you go. Because of so, its, its fourth wall humor. Like, exactly. Especially when the grave digger looks up and... Some folks have a strange idea of entertainment. So that was one of the first ones I ever saw. I came home one time and I just caught it on like Showtime or Cinemax late at night, and I was hooked. I was a lot of kills in movie. that one. It, yeah. You know what is good? It was a fresh take. It's still one of my top three easily. Maybe still my favorite. I know I said it was my favorite. Watching it again though, I mean, yeah, it's very fun. You are right though. What? I mean, it, sometimes uh, it's hard to you know because four does have the better kills and the gore and, and the better funny. cast. And it is funny. Yeah, it, it's funny and it's got you know Corey Feldman and. Uh, it's a good way to put it. It combines the best things about Jason. I yeah. thought I thought Final Chapter was probably the most. But that that's why, like, I consider Jason Lives like one of my favorite horror films too, is mm. because of that. It, it's just the self references, and it it does it does more. Because think about it when you're when you're asked like, do you want to do something Part Six? Even with Star Wars, it's like, do you want to do Star Wars Part Seven, yeah. Eight? And it's like after a while, you're like, I'm I'm doing really Part Eight or Nine or Seven, whatever or part six, you're doing a sequel in an established franchise and you want to keep it fresh, but you're still doing part six. Yeah, you know? That's what part so six did so that's well. what Tom McLaughlin fresh. did very well with that movie. And was it, it has a great beginning and, and the, probably the best ending of the series. Again, yeah. With Tommy in the, in the lake, in the ring of fire. and um... Yeah. I don't know if I like Tommy in part six that much. I, I just, I always wanted Corey Feldman to come back because I, I just felt like Corey Feldman... Yeah made that character and they never really took that character to where he was supposed to well, go. he came back go. in five. Yeah, but he was a mute. <laughs> in the snow. It was terrible. In the rain. I could do it because I got glasses. Yeah. Even I, even, that was one of the worst aspects of five. <laughs> yeah. What was I going to say about six? Oh, and the, the kids in the summer camp. And you know, it's weird. I was watching that scene where he looms over that little girl and she starts praying and he leaves her. Yeah. It's almost kind of like a, you know, like they, they say Jason's kind of like, what's the word? A sympathetic killer almost. Like you know, you not, not like to change the subjects really, but it's still in horror. But I was watching The Walking Dead recently. Oh, okay. And I know this is like 30 years after Jason lives. But there's I, I was just uh, catching up on season four. I'm now mm -hmm. caught up on season five. But I was watching all of season four. On Halloween, I watched like seven episodes back to back. It's a good show, huh? Yeah. yeah. And there's a scene where one of the main characters, an adult, has to shoot a 12-year-old in the back of the head because she kills her sister. It's fucked up. And you just you look back to like these Jason movies that... It was risky to kill a kid. It just was not done, and that's your point in part six. Unless it was Jaws, but yeah. Yeah, but that that was like one of the riskiest scenes, and to to see that this is being done on national TV now, mm -hmm. like that's what I'm really liking about Walking Dead is it doesn't it, it takes a lot of fucking risks. Yeah, well you, you have know? to. It's, it's so, you gotta be cutting edge. Yeah. Oh, that show was good for Walking edge. Dead. I thought you didn't, weren't a big fan of it. It, or is it growing on it you? has its ebbs and its flows. The problem mm -hmm. with Walking Dead, have you seen much of it? The first season. Okay, so the problem with Walking Dead is the way it does it, and it did this, it's really started doing this in season, maybe the last half of season two and, and after They're that. They're in a prison, right? Sorry. Yeah, but what, what, they, what they'll do is they'll have a, they'll, somewhere in the plot, all of the characters get separated. So then, like, during the first part of the season, and then the second half, you'll have one episode on this character, and then the next episode will be on that character. The third episode will be on another character, and then the fourth episode you'll bring them all together again. And they stretch the series out so long by doing that that you have a lot of filler episodes that don't really say a lot. But they're cool to watch. But when each episode is, is an hour long, I mean, sometimes it feels like they're really drying out the story. And that's why I got really frustrated with the beginning of season four. It, it was just like yeah. the first couple episodes didn't say anything and I was getting pissed. <laughs> and then finally, about halfway through, it really got good. Well, God, I'm glad you're enjoying it. I gotta try it out. I should check it out. Why yeah, not? the first season, I'll be honest, the first, like, six episodes didn't do much for me. The second season, like, the first episode of season two got me hooked. And then it just ebbs and flows. Like, you know, when it's good, it's really good. And when when it's slow, it, it it's not bad. It just, you know, you, you can cut a couple episodes down a little bit and make it more... You know, just faster paced. Yeah. That's my opinion. And a lot of people are saying the same thing about it. But that's the thing. You keep watching those episodes so that, like, five episodes later... It's really good. Like, there's a lot of really good payoffs. Right. But well, you got to wait five yep. hours to get to it. Right. So. Anyway. Cool show, Jason though. 2 or 3. Is it still... I think I might have to give the edge to 3, I think. Two. I watched it in 3D. It was pretty cool, actually. When did you watch it in 3D? Well, I got it with... It came with 3D glasses. I went to Walmart and got, like, the two-disc set for, like, 4 dollars Did you see the 3D? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it came was out pretty sweet. Yeah. yeah. Like, you saw the, the little things. It's a good... I might say that one's got the most attractive girls. 
All three of those girls are really, really good. Yeah, I, I, actually, I wanted to ask you that. What, what's, what's, what movie has the most attractive girls? Five. I think. Really? As sleazy, uh, as sleazy as it is. Don't get me wrong. It's a very sleazy the girl movie. In the but, woods and, you know, but, the girl yeah, in the woods. The girl in the You even really admitted the, the robot girl, whatever her name she was. She was really cute. Yeah, I didn't like her I mean, hair, though. I mean, what was all oh, that? I, I don't know. That was all weird, but she was cute. But that and that and that. This was three. the 80s, I think three, though. three definitely. All three of those girls um, were pretty good looking. You know something that no one ever <laughs> brings up? Yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> you know what no one ever brings up, though? <laughs> the, the one girl who gets the... Uh, you know she's pregnant in part three. Yeah, that's that's. An so no one ever point. brings up that when Jason kills her, he's killing the unborn child. They mentioned child it like four too. times in the movie. I'm sitting yeah. like she's pregnant. I mean, why would they even make that a plot point? You know, it's just weird. Yeah, I don't know if it was intentional or not. I would go with two though. You um, like two better? I actually think three is one of the, the my least favorite ones. I don't know why. I just never Bottom gravitated. Four? Maybe I liked uh, two though, I, and I'm still debating if I like. I don't know if I like two better than one. It's very close because it's really almost the same movie. Um, but I like the ending a lot with Ginny and, and putting on the sweater. I like that aspect. You can go now. Mother is pleased. Yeah. I don't know. And uh, again, part two is one of the first one. I think I saw two before I saw one. My favorite shot in two, though, was when they're asking who's going to go to the bar. And they do that long-ass camera shot of all the different counselors making their decisions of who's going to stay and who's going to go. I just noticed oh, how long wander, they do that. Our wanderers have decided to stay and, see, and watch the camp. It's just cool nice? because all the people that are staying are going to get killed. And you just see that slow pan of everyone almost pretty much deciding their fates right there. And it's kind of cool how they did that. And yeah. It even has the bar scene. It's so that was, that was a little weird, though. It kind of takes you out of the movie, though. You know, when they go to the bar and they're all drinking. I like that, though. I, 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 she goes, maybe he's just a retarded child. <laughs> a frightened retard? Oh, oh, let me let me go. So funny. <laughs> He's got the beard. <laughs> so five's got the best looking girls? You think so? I think so, yeah. In terms of looking I, 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 I want to make love to you. <laughs> <laughs> I said I, I didn't mean it. <laughs> Sorry. She was probably the least best looking one, but. Oh, I like that you girl. You got to see the boobs, though. Yeah, she just stands yeah, in front of the mirror like pointlessly. Girl. I thought they were all attractive. I just, five was a very sleazy movie. Very because sleazy. almost everybody had to take their top off. You ain't like... so pretty yourself, you know. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> I like Vi for that reason. It's 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 like technically. To me, what it was is definitely like the last half hour. I really felt that was. The it's weakest technically part a of bad movie. movie. I mean, the weakest part of the movie I felt was definitely the whole lap. I like the rain. That was kind of cool. Like have it happen during a yeah, thunderstorm. They all have rain. But the whole chase just it sucked. I really the whole last half hour to me was just. A, a drag. I see what you're saying though. Like with the a chase real scene, drag. like you'll see them running from nothing, and then all of a sudden he'll pop up behind a car or something. Because you know what I mean. The last half hour of a Jason movie is always important. The chase scene, and I always I like the the first three all have really great end sequences. The third one, you know, when she goes in the car and he breaks through the windows, all that stuff's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, they the can't all be one. they can't all be winners, Matt. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, I'll be I'll be honest. As much as I love these movies, I understand yeah. that they're bad movies. Like technically, they all are kind of bad movies. Um, it's it just like I said, they're they're great Halloween films and they're movies that I grew up on. Yeah, that's interesting. They're not good movies, but like people love them. They have such a whole large cult following and it's been rated as one of the 10 best yeah, franchises you nailed it, in though. history it's a cult following that's I mean, what it's it amazing yeah. yeah the fans i mean you know yeah you know jay uh who, which movie has the most kills i think it's jason goes to hell i think i looked it up that makes sense doesn't it man they were like bleh, 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 on, let him go on screen kill sure but i like, think it was like 23 if you, if you watch like jason x like in the first five minutes he kills like 20 of those yeah. security guards off screen well part five had 20 which is one of the highest in the, yeah. In the, yeah, there was a lot of people got killed. Man, that guy got yeah. so mad over his son being killed. It didn't make any sense. I don't know. If I didn't have any good kills, did it? I'm gonna fucking fucking kill you. Fucking start the fucking car up. Let's go. These cunts ain't gonna wait all night. <laughs> He's like, I gotta go take a dump. <laughs> he goes and like walks. He walks like. <laughs> people think those those couple are gay. It's funny. Oh come on. They do. Those Italian hood rats. Yeah. <laughs> start the fucking car. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking kill you. <laughs> it's still not starting. I'm gonna kick your ass. Kick your All ass. All right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Come on, these bitches ain't gonna wait all night. <laughs> 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 God, you know, the, the, the lady who played Ethel was in a movie before with Burt Reynolds. Oh, okay. And the wig that she wore in that movie is the same one she used in part five. Just some interesting. Humor. You want to talk about the Halloween season? Let's talk about the Halloween season. That could be our next little little topic. I mean, it's only it's three days late. November third. It is late, but you know what? Hey, you know, I what like up? those long nights when it was windy. It? Just all the scary movies we get we to left, watch. Well, I, you we didn't carved, get to watch any good ones, but we carved pumpkins and, yeah? and shit. On. Yeah. What's your favorite Halloween day. costume? What were you as on Halloween? This year, I went to Jack's uh, Halloween party, and yeah. I I was a hooker, Jewish accountant. No, <laughs> you were a Jewish accountant. No, I I went to Party City actually, and I bought. Uh, for like ten bucks, I bought a, a gangster hat, one of those like 
yeah. like the kind of Michael Jackson wears almost. Sure. And I bought a zombie mask. Not the whole mask. It's just the, the rubber part for like five bucks. It covers your eyes. And I had my samurai sword. So I went as a, a samurai gangster zombie. <laughs> nice. Did you have a good time? Yeah, it was, well, no, I there. didn't because a lot of people there. Are, there are people that that like Jack no, didn't even know that like they were like partying down the hallway and they were drunk and they wandered into his apartment and started chilling out with us. It was weird. I'm not used to that. It's like it was like a dorm room party, and uh, no, I didn't have fun because they were playing beer pong the whole night and they wouldn't let me play. <laughs> you weren't very good. No, they wouldn't let me play. Why? Like, because they kept talking it up. Like they all the younger kids, the underage kids, kept playing it. And I was like, I'm next, I'm next. They were like, no, fuck you, Glenn's next. I'm like, all right. So, no, I didn't have that much. You want some questions? I got I got ten questions for Lenny Sherman on the visual podcast. May I well have ten not, questions. May as well and I expect you to answer them. them. Who's your favorite character that played Batman? Favorite? Bruce Wayne. No. <laughs> your favorite He's a actor. Character. Oh, your actor. Michael Keaton, by far. Oh, really? Yeah. All right. Uh, your favorite moment from the AVGN movie? You mean. haven't really even seen it yet. My favorite moment. I'm asking you. I'm asking um, for me. God, there's two. Let's see. But the, the 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 main the main one for me is at the very end where he promises to give the audience the ET review, and at the very end the spaceship lowers the, the Atari controller down, and it <laughs> nice. goes to he his last line is you're gonna get yours, and then it goes to credits, and then you think where the fuck is the review, and then during the credits he gives you the ET review. Oh, okay, that's pretty so cool. So that was cool. That's your favorite part. Yeah. All right. Anyways, uh, which is your favorite part of the Berserk trilogy? The, the three parts. Uh, What's your favorite section? If you can only have one section to watch. In the second movie, Battle for Doldry, the actual Battle for Doldry is a fucking phenomenal. So you would take the second part over the other two chapters? Yeah. Okay. Good one. There you go. Uh, Return, I mean, don't <laughs> get me wrong. Return Preserve of the Jedi or trilogy. New Hope? <laughs> pass. I gotta oh, pass fair on that enough. One, please. Oh, both. <laughs> Pee Wee or Ernest? <laughs> Pee Wee. Really? By far. God. I take. What'd you call her? He's, he's a likable hillbilly. Yeah, likable. <laughs> They're hillbilly. redneck classics. Yeah, they are. <laughs> Lucas or Zemeckis? Whoa, that's the one I pass. knew I was gonna get you. You can't pass on these, folks. That's like cheating. Him. That's that's like using. I like him for special. no. That's not a fair question though. I like him for Maybe different reasons. Specials. Okay. Anyways, uh, who's your I like Zemeckis's movies. Who's your favorite Twisted Metal two car? But can I finish I the first random. question? Oh, well, you, you already passed. No, I like. I think Robert Zemeckis makes more entertaining movies, but okay. I, I respect Lucas more as a filmmaker because of his contributions to the industry. There you go. George so, Lucas, it's like a beers. <laughs> George Lucas more or less made me want to become a filmmaker, more so than any other filmmaker. So it was Zemeckis or Lucas? I'm not answering that. You, Fuck you. You've been. Oh. I gave it an right, answer. So it's that just that one Spiel you like. That is not an answer. That's beating around the, the pussy bush. Steven Spielberg. Anyways. <laughs> Your favorite twist the middle two car or character? Uh, God, I don't know. Spectre, I guess. Spectre. No, but my face for the words. You didn't say because of the ending. If I had to choose the ending, Axel. Here's a good one. Of all the movies you've These made, which one would you cut out? Uh, Star Horse, by far. No, you know what? No, which one would you literally burn? Like just oh, forget um, you made it. Dark Knight of Nazareth. <laughs> oh yeah, you did. Oh, I fully agree. That was pretty bad. And he, <laughs> I'm the Dark Knight of Nazareth. Ugh, oh, I'm fucking Batman. <laughs> Look at my cheaper than South Park effects. Okay. That's a good shot. I can't die here on camera. Oh my god. Oh, uh, your favorite Friends character? Uh, God, I don't know. Who do you find the funniest? Oh, the funniest. I always go with Chandler. Uh, you probably had the best. Friend. Yeah, Chandler. What's the worst Leprechaun movie? Leprechaun Origins, by fucking far. Origins. The remake that just came out with Hornswoggle. <laughs> That he didn't have to be in because, yeah, the wrestler Hornswoggle. Okay. Did you see my review for it? No. Oh my oh, god! What? I'll let you listen to it. It's uh, it's fucking terrible. Your favorite Halloween costume? Let me hold on. Go back to Leprechaun Origins. Right, Leprechaun watch. Origins is not only the worst of the Leprechaun movies, and that's saying a fucking yeah. lot. It's the worst horror remake I've ever seen. Ooh. Imagine that. That's a twofer. Even worse than the Phantom Menace. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do I have to go over this again? Phantom Those Menace. are good movies. Phantom Menace. Can we do it on camera? You can do it on camera now. You can, oh. Look at the camera and say you, you like Phantom funny? Menace. I uh, I watched Phantom Menace last yeah. night actually. Come on, man. And uh, it's getting harder for me to defend it. <laughs> you actually watched it again last yeah. night. Yeah. Fuck. You're like you're like that's the one I don't look forward to watching. <laughs> you said I that did, like a year ago. Like, I did say still... that. I know. Because yeah. I'm trying to watch them in order, and I, every time I I can't get that far, I start with Phantom Menace again. I don't know. I have a crush on Jar Jar. What can I say? Favorite Halloween costume? Jason. 
Jason? I was only him like nine. My mom one time bought me a fucking Pee Wee Herman costume. Back in like 1990. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm admitting that. <laughs> Can you have a worst costume? That'd be it. All right, we're going to do a segue. We've got one more movie review for everyone on the visual podcast. I like doing movie, re re bleh, movie reviews with you. It's important to me. So let's segue into my favorite Tim Burton film, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. After this, folks. Something <laughs> spicy, something <laughs> zesty. Put on some spoonies dressing. Naked man. Anyways, welcome back, folks. Pee Wee's Big Adventure. When did you first? When were you first touched by Pee Wee? It's Tell okay. You. I'm here for you. Sorry. Right. Tell me on the doll where he touched me. Yeah. Um. <laughs> when I, were you first? I saw my my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Don't crack up on the camera. You, uh, like, <laughs> <laughs> he looks so cute. Your dad, what? So I have this ugly. naturally red face. I don't know why. <laughs> You're blushing. I'm not. Should we blushing. skip the subject? I am not. Should we skip the subject? <laughs> no. He doesn't want the drink. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, anyway. when I say I do, that means I do. Are we going to get through? Anyways, Pee Wee's Big Adventure released in 19. <laughs> My was dad it, taped it, it on TV, and that was the first time I saw yeah. it, and I, I liked it a lot back then. Just a simple story of him trying to get his bike back, but you yeah. know, it's kind of a cult classic, and it has all those great touches of a I don't know movie. why it's so enjoyable. That's that's the thing about I'm it. I'm fucking talking here. I... So anyway, Pee Wee's Big Adventure, <laughs> released in 1987. <laughs> anyways. All right, so yeah, anyways, uh, fuck this movie. <laughs> Thank you. Anyways, no, a lot of cool little sequences like the, the clowns were scary. Yeah, the that, that was the thing about it. Like it was like a multi-genre movie. Very gothic almost, but it kind of complemented Pee Wee's um, perverted humor. There's nothing perverted about Pee Wee's humor. The there, there was an interview about that the other day though, because he has a. <clears throat> um, I ripped up my cards. Good for you. The you know the Pee Wee's Playhouse. Mm -hmm. They're releasing the whole series on Blu-ray, so they had to interview Paul Rubens because he's like behind the remastering of it or whatever and he was saying like he like legitimately when he made that show he wanted to make it just for kids a show that really kids liked but a lot of adults have pointed out like there's a lot of hidden sexual innuendos in the show mm -hmm. and he said like he honestly did not intend it to be anything like that it's our like sexual minds like our dirty minds that make it into that and i just thought that's he's just trying to get his bike back and you know just yeah. so many great it's, that's another road trip movie my favorite's probably with the when they go into the dinosaurs and she they're talking about her it's big really Andy. <laughs> so many great parts that's probably my favorite i'm trying there. to use the phone Andy's got that big bone and peewee's all like ducking around ah! <laughs> and then there's jason when he falls down. <laughs> he falls down <laughs> that part you know I think that's a movie Dan likes. I'm, hi, Dan. Hello. You know, he's going to yeah. see this, so he knows. He knows he likes Pee Wee's. I remember laughing with him at that movie. Yeah. Anyways, uh, the jump into that's, the pool. That's one movie that we can all agree on. Whenever we hang out together, that's the only movie we can watch. Where together. are they hosing him down? It's me again. Oh, man. really? It's me again. Of course, the. Francis! Go on and scream your head off. <laughs> I'm trying to listen to reason. I love when he jumps. <laughs> what? Go ahead and scream your head off. No one will hear you. <laughs> And then he does the <laughs> perfect swan dive. It's like a, like a torpedo. A little mild before anybody can hear us. Spearmint or fruit? Oh, fruit, please. Excuse me. No! Oh! Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, sorry, yeah. let him go. Sutton's helpers. All right, no one put that to me, dude. <laughs> it's a great movie. It's probably almost my favorite. I mean, if it wasn't, it's for really my my favorite thing about that movie is it's really creative. That's what I got out of it when I was a kid. It's very creative. A lot of bright colors. A lot of things that you. A lot of what the fuck moments. Looks great on Blu-ray. Have you seen it on Blu-ray yet? No. Looks but amazing. I'm sure it does. Tim yeah, Tim colors. Burton is probably one of my most visual, my favorite visual director because yeah, right. you know that he you, even if the movie's bad, you know it's his style. And even Pee Wee's Big Adventure, which stands apart from everything else he does. Yes. Yes. Um, Still, like with the dark clown scenes and the dinosaur scenes, still has that t the large Marge scene still has that stamp of approval. You can tell it was a Tim Burton movie, and like Beetlejuice, I think was before Pee Wee's Big Adventure or after. I don't remember, but Beetlejuice was a Tim Burton film that had that same kind of goofball. You couldn't define it, but it was so creative you just went with it. Hmm, that's a good question. I think it was. 
I don't know. It might have been before. Pee Wee's and Beetlejuice were his first. Pee Wee's Big Adventure, I think, was his first one. <coughs> I don't know. Yeah, but... it was his debut. Yeah. And it's weird because Pee Wee isn't like that like funny of a character. You know, you watch the show, he's kind of annoying. It's I can a see kid's show, like, yeah. yeah. But like in the movie, it fits him well, just because I don't know. I love, he's supposed you know... to be making some big announcement. Like I, I guess they are bringing. Yeah, him Judd back Apatow. This year. Yeah, I'm producing. Oh, I swear, really? yeah, something like that. Yeah, Paul Rubens. Yeah, that'd be cool if they can make Pee Wee. <laughs> <laughs> if they can make Pee Wee look just like he did 20 years ago, I'm in. She's, she was kind of cute. Dottie, what was that her name? You know, right. The drive in. She, you know what? Dottie was in an she's episode. Rugrats. Of, right, oh, yeah, and she was like, also in an episode of Friends. Yeah. No, she looks pretty hot today, I think. And weren't we looking at pictures of her and like, oh, hello. She's all right. She had a recipe. What, Daddy? What? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so what do you give it on the old Linsky? Maybe here? we can go to the drive in. I give it a 69. An 8 out of 10. Hot, highly recommended by Matt Weatherford. I mean, it's just sensational. Go see it if you have. If you haven't, then what the fuck are you doing it for? You know. Uh, yeah. I... You watch this. You watch us. You listen to our podcast because you like movies. If you haven't seen Pee Wee's Big Adventure, you don't like movies. I'd give it an eight out of ten. Yeah, I think it's it's a rating. Thank you, Lynn. I know. Right. It's hard for me to the highest movies. rated. No, because I'd probably give Batman almost a nine. Almost. I'm. I'm. I'm I don't know. Yeah, nine. I don't know. It's not a ten, but. Maybe an eight. I think I actually enjoy Batman now that more now than I do when I was a kid because that Batman is not really a kid friendly movie to be honest. I mean, the Joker scared the fuck out of me. What? Ba- oh. Jack Nicholson's Joker when he when he burns that guy with the hand buzzer. Oh, yeah. oh my fucking Anton god! Got a little hot on the collar. Yeah, like what the fuck? <laughs> what a great delivery! <laughs> yeah, he had the. <laughs> Bob, you are my number one. Batman's head on a lance. And I. My number one. Yeah. Great performance. Yeah. We've been read it out here, boys. Watch it. The other day I watched anyway. um, The Dark Knight Returns, the animated one. Oh, okay. It was all right. I got to watch that movie again because I don't remember, I remember being kind of disappointed by it. But Dark, I mean, Knight, Ra- yeah, Dark Knight Rises. Rises? Yeah. I got to watch good. it again. It was all right. I thought, I thought all the Christopher Nolan Batman movies were okay. Um, I just felt The Dark Knight stood out more because of Heath Ledger. Yeah. Um, but I, if it wasn't for him, I don't think that movie. Well, would I think have been Nolan that had good. a lot to do. I think Nolan's a very talented filmmaker. Just and don't get me wrong, I liked. I, I want to see Interstellar, and I want. Yeah, you let's know, go I, see it, dude. Please. And I, I did like uh, the Leonardo DiCaprio. Inception one. was yeah. amazing. You haven't seen Memento yet? No. Memento. Oh, oh my God. No. Oh, yet. that's like a movie for you, man. That's like one of those independent like. Yeah. It's so bucks. cool because it's all like backwards and shit. Yep. It's such a cool movie to watch. I've he he is one of the best working filmmakers right now. He's made a few other movies. I don't really know them. But, uh, obviously, Dark Knight will go down is probably one of the greatest movies of all time. Maybe. I just feel like, maybe. like maybe I know a lot of people like those Dark Knight movies. I'm just wondering if, if he had not u- if he had not used Batman and just kind of made his own original world, yeah. used the same stories, but maybe crafted his own main character. If they would have gone, I think that would have been maybe more. Inter- I don't know. Well, you got to remember too is where the series was when he came out. Oh, you know, it's yeah. like Batman I mean, and Robin. I mean, people yeah. bad taste in people's mouths, and everyone yeah. knew Batman needed a, a major. Don't, major don't get me movie. wrong. I appreciate all three movies. I like yeah. them. They're fine. But I mean, they're they're definitely not movies I would have liked. My kids having a seizure. They're definitely not movies that I would have liked as a kid. Are we gonna go see the other Let's go. Let's go watch it. Let's go go to a matinee. I'm down. IMAX, baby. Meet me at uh, 20 Mountain if you're not busy. That's not IMAX. That is not IMAX. You need to go to the Henry Ford Museum to see IMAX. I, well, it's still an IMAX. It's, no, it's We're going to go see it. going to go see it at the Graduate Theater in the comfortier chairs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Doing the mat side. No, that's how I felt during Godzilla. It was Godzilla. a fucking shitty ass movie. Godzilla sucked. It was like, it was chairs, man. I'm like, Godzilla sucked. And I, I was, I'm tired of people, to, when that movie first came out, people were defending the fuck out of that movie. That movie sucked. Was all right. I was sitting there like I, I kind of want to see. It was the a good movie, like an Matthew Broderick it. one, because this one just sucks. Oh come on! I think you're being too harsh on it, aren't you? Probably. It still sucks. Should we watch it? It'll grow on you. Anyways, is this about it? What else did we have? Anything else? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know what other topics I had because I ripped it all up. Because <laughs> you're an asshole. Tom Hanks. Tanky Panky and the Marlboro Man. What else do you want to talk about besides movies? Are you done with the movie stuff? Are we done with movies finally? Let's talk about Goldfish. I don't think there's anything else we can talk about with movies. I mean, I think we're done. Goldfish. I like Goldfish. How about you? <laughs> One fish, two fish. Oh, two Berserk. Fish, so what about Berserk? I mean, what is what has encaptured in, in you so much with Berserk? Like, Jesus Christ, man. I just did a 45-minute fucking vlog. Three movie reviews. I know. But tell the people. I did! <laughs> you could be like Sam Lewis. I told everybody. I did. <laughs> No, like, I don't know. I mean, the story, is, is it really that captivating of, of Guts and raping Casca and getting powers? I don't know. It's it's, what, I just wonder what it is that tingles your balls. I mean, I'm just... 
When I say that I think I'm liking Berserk better than Star Wars and better than Lord of the Rings, there's oh. something about Berserk. Okay. Uh, Send for an exorcist. Please. Yeah. No, that's cool. I'm glad you like it. I'm just I, I'm just trying to figure out like, what is it about it that really captures it's, your uh, imagination? It's... it's the epic things of it? Or? Yeah, well, it's... It's really hard to plug. say. Here's your two-minute plug. My two-minute plug? <laughs> yeah, watch my vlog the end. Uh... <laughs> How about two seconds, bitch? <laughs> I've said enough yeah. about this fucking series. Yeah, you're right. That was a stupid topic. I was just, no. I, I, I love talking about Berserk, but it's really hard because it's not really in the mainstream yet. Nobody who watches this is gonna have seen. Wasn't Berserk. it a video game? Was that how did how did you get introduced? It was by damn by a video game. Wasn't it was it? the Dreamcast game yeah. called Berserk. Right. The sort of Berserk, Gutch Rage, and I'm playing it one day, and he was like, "Yeah, I think, I think it's based off a cartoon." <laughs> Yeah, so one day Dan said to me, duh! <laughs> Anyways, yeah, so he's going to buy Roseanne Barr's refrigerator. Right, he's going to see this. That, he'll know what I mean when I say that. Um, that's a dad reference. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I, I went to Blockbuster and just rented them all off a of whim, and I was not into anime yet. So The I Japanese was, cartoon thing? Yeah. So I, uh, you know, you see the stuff here, like Dragon Ball Z and fucking Hakusho Man or whatever, and it's like, this is fucking stupid, because it's all for kids. Mm. And. I popped this thing in and I was just watching it in passing and I was listening to it and the, the dialogue between the characters just was really entrancing and just the things that the characters say, their philosophies, um, I mean, they're, it, it's just like when you've got a character like Griffith who's like so charismatic and he's put on this big pedestal, yeah. you know, the, the, they make you feel like he's actually on this pedestal, like you're so amazed because they reveal to you a lot about this character, but... It's just somehow it comes across very well. And it's not live action. It's a fucking cartoon that makes you feel that way. And I remember watching those scenes. Like, you get, at least I got, every piece of, every message that they were trying to send me. It, Berserk isn't very subtle. There's a lot of dialogue. And they kind of, they show you the visual. Like the scene where Guts and Griffith are on the stairs. And Griffith is way up here looking down. I mean, it's very obvious symbolism. But it's... It's there. It's just so captivating, and it's it's always so pleasing to go and see like somebody's top ten anime list and find Berserk is on that list at like very high up on the list, like yeah. number one because it's a very cool series. And then the feature films came out, and I'm like, they're fucking remaking the same thing. And I got more entranced with the movies than the show because they were done beautifully. Like you saw them. And what did you think of that third movie when you were like? Like, who is that guy with the crippled body and the helmet? I'm like, that's Griffith. I didn't. Did I, I thought I knew that. No, you were like, no, that can't be him. Come on. I'm like, yeah, that's Griffith. And and you were like, what the fun? They got sucked into the tornado and they, everyone, all the it's monsters. It's hard to remember. It's been so long. Well, Gotta rewatch it. I remember you, like, I'm Lenny. I'm looking forward Like, you were like, Lenny, what, what the, the fuck? fuck's going on? And you yeah. warned me, too. Like, Matt, you're, not, you're gonna ask me three times, what's going on? And yeah. I did. Actually, I asked him five times. Yeah. It's, it's that, that's the thing. Just, I, I, in my Berserk 3 review, I was like, imagine if the Empire Strikes Back ended, but as opposed to Luke and Leia looking off at the Millennium Falcon flying off, it ends with Darth Vader bending Leia over a table and fucking her in front of Han Solo while Luke and Chewbacca's bloody corpses are in the background. That's what the ending of Berserk is exactly like. That's what happens. Um, there's no Chewie and Han and Luke, but that's essentially what happens, and that's how it ends. That's how the series ends, and that's how the movie ends, and they don't, like, make any other movies to continue it. I know what happens, but that, that's a thing. Like, the cartoon is very separate from the books, because the books take place after the cartoon, and it's very dark. It's basically about Guts going after, you know, getting revenge on the demons for raping Casca and killing the hawk. That's what the whole story is about. Kind of scared me with the whole raping Leia and bloody bodies. Well, that's what it's like, though, isn't it? Isn't Berserk I know, like but you that? Kind of... <laughs> I have a picture of it. I'll show you the picture I made of it. It's it's Leia. It's, like... it's it's Leia in the uh, skimpy Jabba the Hutt slave outfit with bent over and, and Darth Vader's behind her. I and, win. <laughs> yeah, and and Han's over here just like staring, and you've got like Chewbacca's like bleeding corpse in the you wrote you drew that and uh, photoshopped Sick it. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, you photoshopped it. Because I can. Let's give it subtitles. <laughs> oh, shit. He's fucking her. Bone sh boner shooter. All right. It's one of our topics we got. You, did you not think of any material all this time I told you? Think of material, please, because I'm all out. You got anything for us? You didn't show up till 9 o'clock. I thought you were going to book again. No. I mean, hey, here I am. In the flesh. Yeah. In my Led Zeppelin shirt. The only reason I did this is because this is a harkens back to our uh, Hellmaster video that we did. I were you wearing this. that? Yeah. I was like, <laughs> What was and I wearing? I don't remember. And if you don't like it, then you're gay. 
That was my line. What else you got? Huh? What are you watching these days? Huh? You're watching Walking Dead, obviously. That's taking up some time. Walking Dead. I'm trying to watch Star Wars Rebels, but I, I just can't get into it. It's a That's, trap. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like. In just like wait a, till part seven. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna have to because I'm like Star Wars overload. Yeah, over, you gotta take it easy right man. now. Too much just... Phantom Menace, man. <laughs> Pretty soon you won't be able to get it up anymore. I can't. Yeah, I can't defend Phantom Menace anymore. I watched it's it last bad. night. No, it's not bad. It's just boring. You'll say it. it that, there you go. Well, boring is not good, I'll tell you that. No. You know, I, I like the Phantom Menace for the imagination it has, but the story just isn't very captivating. No, no. I mean, that that's all I can really say about it. And the more These I watch These meetings it, are not going to uh, Emperor's plans of negotiations. Yeah, it's, oh, it's a lot of that. Oh, let us barter some goods. Ooh, we'll <laughs> give you some corn. I'll give you the galaxy. <laughs> okay, Princess Leia. This is a very uh, simplified viewing of it, but yeah, it, it's just... <laughs> you give me your little the, green the plot, friend. <laughs> the... <laughs> Dude, let's meet tomorrow on the moon of Clisant. <laughs> we shall... <laughs> Bring the emperor, yes. Yeah, it is a dry movie. I'm never going to say that Phantom Menace is bad there's or terrible. There's like a lot of negotiations and like there's just a lot of... It like, just oh. doesn't... It, it doesn't tell me anything I want to know. And... <laughs> I feel like an asshole because I fucking sit it here. Tells me I've sat here. I know. I've sat here for like the better half of fourteen years defending this movie, well, and now it's like better late than like, never. <laughs> You've seen the light, Letty. No, uh, I mean, like I sat there watching the pod race. I'm like, this is a fucking great scene, but that's right. Like, it's like who, fine, yeah. who really cares about the Trade Federation? Like, why is that interesting? What does this have to do with the rest of Star Wars? If it had just tied up to the story a little bit more, Jar Jar was very annoying. <laughs> he was. Jar Jar doesn't bother me that much, though. It's you know, I just felt like he was just there for like market placement. Well, we need yeah. to sell toys, so let's put this character in there. It's not very inspiring, though. No. I, I mean, I know, I, but I still, I, I think George Lucas had good intentions when he made it. I really do. I, I, it's just, you know, Star Wars has gone beyond film. It's, it's not just a movie to most it's people. It's everyone's movie. Yeah. yeah. And it's, well, it's more than just a movie though. It's like, it's Phenomena. everything to it's people. Phenomenon, right. Yeah. yeah. It's like a way of life or something. What some a people. testament to, to a movie to do that. And then, you, you know, you've got such big expectations and then it comes out and it's, you know, and I'll always remember, I, I genuinely did enjoy the movie when it first came out and I was always trying to understand, even in film school, like going to everybody, like, why didn't you like that movie? Like, well, what was wrong? It's, it's fucking Star Wars. How can you not like it? And here I am watching it today, and it's just like, yeah, it didn't do much for me. Not that it's bad, because it's a very inventive movie. And I liked a lot of the CGI. I liked a lot of the goofy, quirky stuff going on, because that doesn't happen a lot in Star Wars. But, yeah, when you look at it in terms of... And this is what Story I Story and characters right. and... But I, I will say this, though. If you don't look at it as part of Star Wars, you look at it as its own fantasy film... I think it has its merits. And a lot of the stuff that people complain about, the nitty gritty, like the midi chlorines and that, that doesn't bother me. I like that aspect because it, oh. it adds more mythology to the story. Did Some you finish people, it or did you? No, I watched the whole thing. But yeah, at the end of the day, it was just like I couldn't get in. And I don't know if it's because I'm finally just like I don't like it as much or if it's just like I'm on a Star There's Wars There's only so many times you can watch a movie. Yeah. I know. I mean, and that that's the thing. Like, I, movie, like yeah. lately, I've been really craving the original trilogy, but I keep yeah. trying to watch the prequels oh. and it's just not got to punish yourself. I'm not punishing myself. I still appreciate him, but I mean... It, we it, should watch the original trilogy, don't you have it on Blu-ray? Yeah, it just... It, well, but I don't want to... Uh, the reason why I don't is because I don't want to ignore the prequels, and that's what everybody keeps saying. They're like, oh, like I hope that Episode 7 won't be like the... And I like the prequels. I still do. I still like Episode 2 quite a bit, and 3 is almost a masterpiece. Two, yeah, almost. 3 is awesome. I love 3 a lot. Um, you know and I, mean. I think a lot of people are, and I think people are being a little more lenient on 2, because at least 2, you say what you want about the acting, it's, it's at least feels more like that a That might be story. Hayden's worst performance of all time. That's pretty bad. The whole love romantic angle that was played to like. I don't think he's a bad actor. I thought he was fine as Anakin. I had a lot to do with the writing. Well, writing and delivery. I I thought you can't deliver lines like that. No, I I thought the chemistry between him and Natalie Portman. I thought ruined that movie. That was pretty bad. That was just yeah, the writing. I mean. I know. George, man, come on, bro. I mean, I know he's a hard worker. You know, he's he's a hard worker, man. I'm well, but to... he's admitted though. It's not like he thinks he's a good writer. He didn't want to write those. Have movies. someone write it. You know. He did, but that was a thing though. Like, how do you how do you be like, hey, I I, I really want to start writing the Star Wars prequels. Yeah. Do you want to write it for me? Because I'm not good at it. How do you like? Who the hell wants? Well, because you that? give him an outline and then you yeah. know he at least I provides know. an outline. But you got to remember, George Lucas for many years when he was making those movies was all about control, wanting to control his movies. It yeah. was his baby. So. Even though The Phantom Menace is, is widely hated, has a very bad reputation, um, 
like all the decisions he made were things that he stood by. And that's, I think, why I respect the Phantom Menace so much. I don't think Jake Lo I don't think Anakin should have started out at nine years old. It didn't make sense to me, but George was very adamant that the character be nine years old. That's the story he wanted to tell. Yeah. And he told it. And he didn't have a studio saying, you can't do that. So that's what I've always liked about it. That's why I'm always praising George. I would love, how would you like to have the power to make a movie like that and not have any studio come in? Because usually that doesn't everyone, happen. And have everyone hate it. You know? Well, yeah, but whether, <laughs> he didn't, you know, nobody nobody yeah. goes into a movie right. saying, I, I'm going to spend $60 million in a movie just to make it bad. You know, it's just, it's a star. It's Star Wars. Like there's a lot of expectations. He had no idea people were gonna hate it or respond to it that way. Right. You don't know. So until. that's why I'm very defensive about it. You know, there's a lot of George Lucasisms in that movie that I really appreciate. But when you look at it as part of Star Wars, yeah, it doesn't really tell you anything you need to know. Right. You don't really need to see the Senator Palpatine become Chancellor. You don't need to see. You know, the movie should have focused on Obi Wan and Anakin, not Qui Gon and Obi Wan. Like, so all in all, Phantom Menace released in 1999. Go see it, because I mean, if you haven't, go see it. Just go see it. Here's a good question, Let us though. Know how you... If you're showing somebody Star Wars for the first time, do you show them in chronological order, or do you show them starting with four, five, and six? I would definitely then? go Star Wars the original. Yeah, really, definitely. Because it's, yeah, it you started know... everything. Yeah. All the characters, all the the great fantasy telling. I mean, even the editing was seen as as, as really groundbreaking back then. Yeah. I just yeah, you know, I think everyone kind of always goes always goes back to the original Star Wars. I mean, it just had the magic. I mean, it's still. A phenomenal. I still. It's hard to pick. I understand Empire is probably the most praised one, but it's like, yeah. If, if no, you've never seen Star Wars before. That's the one you start with because that just it kickstarted the whole fucking thing. And here we are, forty years after that movie's release, and we're still talking about it. And there's still fans. There's still kids getting into it. That's do you the think power people, of a great movie. Do you man. think people would still be talking about this movie if if they had stopped with Jedi? If there had been no other thing? Because I I seriously because yeah. you have to remember between 1983. In 1995, nobody was talking about Star Wars. It wasn't really in the public conscience. You sure about that? Yeah, if you really look at that time period, there you wasn't a lot going on. I was born in 83, so between 83 <laughs> well, yeah, and 95, went... that was a big portion yeah. of my life. I'm pretty sure Star Wars was big back then. So you're saying if the prequels weren't made, is there a chance Star Wars would not be as big right now? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. No, I wouldn't. I think it'd be just as big. Definitely. Because you, you just got to remember, between like 83 and 95, there was no special edition. They were only on VHS and Laserdisc, and once in a while they'd be re-released on VHS again. That's how I got introduced to them, really. Uh, they're, they're, the video games were few and far between. Most of them were on the computer. Well, not many gamers had computers. They had yeah. Playstations and Nintendo 64s and things. So Shadows of the Empire kind of came out as a testing ground to see if people were still interested in Star Wars. And then you had the special editions, and those are really kind of what kick-started, got Star Wars back in the well, public interest Well, what do you think? You don't again. think it'd be as big, or...? I, it's hard to say, but no, because like I said, there. If you look back between those years, there was no Star Wars really. It was if you were a Star Wars, you were considered a geek. It wasn't like the fanat. It was they were these three movies from the '80s that people kind of forgot about. Like they were cool, but they, they still had Star Wars conventions. But the prequels helped out, you think? And yeah, and that's that's what I have to say about that. In like Star Wars: The Clone Wars, Star Wars Rebels, is it's it's bringing Star. It's keeping it in the public conscience. People know. About, today I went to a comic book store and bought a Star Wars comic book. Oh, okay. So, you know, j just to kind of... I finished reading those Zahn books, by the way. They, they weren't it's an very... interesting thought. I mean, it, you yeah. do wonder how these movies remain so popular. I mean, it really is amazing. I mean, you got five-year-olds now yeah, with decorations think about over it. their walls. Nobody's, nobody's really talking about Harry Potter anymore. The only reason they are now is because they announced they're making more movies to, to make money right. out of it. You know, nobody we'll really... We'll see in 30 years. Yeah, well, well, that's the thing. Like, Star Wars, once they stop making it, I, I think it won't hmm. be relevant anymore. I think that's true for anything. Nah, I don't think so. I, I think do. Star Wars will be relevant. I do, because relevant. think about it. As soon as the series stops, nobody was talking about Die Hard after Die Hard 3 came that's out. That doesn't mean there's not people watching it all the time. I'm not saying they're not it. watching it. I'm just saying it's not in the public conscience like it is now because they keep bringing out more stuff. I mean, look at the lightsaber alone. That's like entered public culture just, just of its image. Yeah, you know, all, all I'm Wars saying and, is yeah. that you know, for, for, for those years in time between Jedi and, like, 95, it wasn't like not everybody was talking about it. You still had yeah. conventions. You still had Star Wars fans. You know, people knew what Star Wars was, but it was hard to really talk about it because it was a dead film. It, it just, it's, it's an old movie. And, you know, film buffs talk about old, it, sure. Yeah. yeah, but 
it, there weren't TV shows. There weren't a lot of novels. You had the occasional comic books and things that were still That's popular. That's an interesting point. But you had to be a comic book fan to read them, you know? Well, the, the re-release average... in theaters probably helped a lot. Well, that's what know. I'm saying. People got to go to the You had the re-release, and... and then you had the DVD, the prequels coming well, out. I think what's most important is that it has stayed relevant. And, you know, I think long after we're gone, it'll still be relevant. Yeah, it would still be going on, yada, yada, yada. Uh, this has been small cast. Thanks for... for no, 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 no. <laughs> we were saying... Uh, yeah, the re-releases helped, and, you know, and, uh, what the fuck was I saying? Yeah, I just, no, like, the popular culture, you know, just from that first movie, lightsabers, and it's just like, I don't know, it's, it's um, I'd love to see it in theater. Please do it. Not just Phantom Menace, please. Please, <laughs> next time, show them all. In the I'd like to see all of them again. I mean, My I, God. I, it just, the Phantom Menace didn't do much for me, and it, maybe it isn't a good film, I don't know. It's hard to comment, you know, because I, I really I'm want to like it. I'm glad we, I think we've come a long way, <laughs> Well, we I don't have to, broke you down. I don't have to disagree. I don't have to agree with everybody either. Temple of no. Doom is still the best Indiana Jones movie, hands down. <laughs> You're not going to break me of everything. Crystal Skull. Crystal Skull is the second best. No, it's not. It's a distant blood <laughs> relative. Yeah, Scream Four relative. is the best horror movie ever. Oh God, Scream Four. We you know, we, we went to a haunted. Glenn took me to a haunted hayride. Yeah. And uh, there were kids behind me, and there's a guy dressed up as Michael Myers walking by, and it was the Rob Zombie Michael Myers yeah. with the stitched face. <laughs> so, and he was like six foot five the tall dude and he walked by and the girl behind me was like quite a bit younger and she was like oh my god he's really big and scary and i'm like that's because he's the rob zombie michael myers and michael myers turns to me and looks at me and he's like <laughs> he walks away <laughs> and then we st me and glenn started talking about jason movies and the girl behind me was like i really like jason x <laughs> I wanted to fucking smack her oh wow that's good you like jason right no you can agree with the little girl anyways I think we're going to wrap this up. I don't know how long this was. We've been up here for at least an hour. <sighs> two camera batteries and two SD It cards. means a lot to have a visual. so that you can We can all... do an audio of it, too, when it's done. But uh, uh, It's yeah. good this way. I mean, now everyone knows what we look like. Can we go back behind the cameras now after this? Because I don't want to be seen. It just feels weird. Everyone's looking at me. My grandma watches this. It's just weird. Your grandma watches you? It's You're... weird. Your grandma... We talk about stupid shit again. This is Matt and Lenny back for the 25th time. Talk about shit we don't know. Talking about Star we're... Wars and we have some great podcast moments. I guess that's one of the other thing I would. My favorite might be the Gremlins three talk. I mean, that was amazing. Just like that five minute block of oh, that was my old friend Gizmo. <laughs> he turned into a masturbating Gremlin. They re-released was... Gremlins again. I was at Best Buy today, and it was like Gremlins what? 30th anniversary on Blu-ray. Is it really? Added two more nostalgic scenes. Did you get of... to see her boobs? <laughs> there was a movie she did before. Uh, was it? Um... Paradise? Or, no, yeah, maybe. Yeah, she's done Yeah, some movies where she was naked, yeah, in her prime when she was like 21. I know. Naked she's chicks. very beautiful. She's very Maybe hot. she should have been in Friday the 13th Part 5. So Part 5's got the best of girls? I don't know. I think so. I, I think Part 3's got the edge. Nah. That Dana Kimball was a real cutie. Um, Dana, yeah, all three of them Dana Kimball was a news anchor for a lot of years. You know what was hot, too, is I was watching the uh, Crystal Lake Memories. Yeah. Freaking uh, Adrian King. Where are you watching Crystal Lake Memories? On YouTube. I, okay. I, was, I was like the making of Friday the 13th. You thought Adrian She King looks looked really high? good. Yeah. Really? She looks really cute. I thought she looked fine like six years ago, but... Mm, that was about the time probably when they were doing the documentary. I don't know. Yeah, she, time has been kind to her. She looked really uh, nice. I don't know. Yeah. I, I thought um, Amy Steele looked pretty good still. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the chick who played Rennie, uh, Jensen Daggett. Did you ever notice that? Jensen Daggett? That's her name. <laughs> that's probably where he got it from. Yeah, that's her Fucking name. That's the actress's time. name. It's Jensen Daggett. All right. And uh, hello, Sebastian. I just want to say hi to Sebastian. What's his last name? Sebastian Shaw. Viragus. He's always yeah. on your Facebook. I just want to say, hey, how you doing, buddy? Sebastian you know, Shaw. You're always, you're always commenting on about everything Do you know he does. who he is? Sebastian Shaw is the guy who played Darth Vader in Jedi. Oh, okay. Well, Sebastian, yeah, Sebastian. Shaw Vargas. Hi. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. Join our podcast sometime. Hey, he should have. Does he live far away from here? Seinfeld her? sucks. Huh? Oh, does he live far away from here? I don't know where yeah, he fuck lives. you for that anyway. You're a Seinfeld guy. Fuck off. <laughs> oh, sorry. Fuck I you. didn't say I that. I like friends, so what the fuck do I know? <laughs> he got in my ass, though. <laughs> Who? Sebastian. <laughs> you said, and I quote, I'll kill you by decrep. <laughs> I'm like, dude, do you even fucking know what decrep is? Yeah, fuck off. Fuck off. I take that shit seriously. Yeah. We just want to say, hey, man, you're probably going to watch the whole thing, and please comment on it, too, you know. Let us know what a couple of loser dick bags we are. Yeah, send us a picture of yourself, all right? I have taken off my makeup. Let's see if you can take off your right, Shut up. All right. Is Batman? This is, yeah. yeah okay. This has been Lenny Sherman and Matt. Shake hands, on the, shake hands on the camera. Shut up. Fuck you. Don't leave me hanging. Shut up. This is Smuckhead. Bye. Matt Weatherford and Lenny Sherman. We'll see you guys later. All right. Bye, bye my figurine. Peace later. out. Yeah. Mine too. <laughs> Comes in multiple colors. Okay. <laughs>
Can we do our retarded faces? Where's my cat? Where's your fucking tofu? Bye, folks. Okay. Are we on tape? Are we on caps? Are we on caps?